डॉक्टर जानकी एस मेनी ऑफ यू बट ऑलरेडी बी नोइंग was one of the leading sanskritists and indologist and she was one of the favorite students of professor raghavan of international repute and she had a very good knowledge very sound knowledge in many areas of sanskrit literature namely literature language and then uh, sahitya sangeeta about which professor tyagarajan will be talking today both sahitya and sangeeta in fact she has written a book on sanskrit and sangeeta and then shaivagama and especially natya shastra and alay text alankara shastra in which she had done a lot of work dramaturgy so many areas of sanskrit literature she has written a lot she has taught a lot and some of us had the fortune of learning from her many things both through her teachings and by observing her way of dealing with the, the subjects and the persons after getting her phd uh, ma she did her uh, mlit on alankara sarvaswa of vyaka which was also subsequently published and then she did phd under professor raghavan on gadya karna amrita a prose work which was also subsequently published by the ksri then she went to oxford she worked under another great scholar professor t barrow and she worked on the bhanas uparupaka you know chaturbhani bhanas she worked on that and she came back here she has held many positions including research assistant position in the university of madras sanskrit department where she was working under professor raghavan in the new catalogus catalogorum project she was also teaching in queen mary's college and later on she was brought to the upu swami shastri research institute and especially after professor raghavan's demise she took up the responsibility of running the institute in those days there is i'm talking of in the 70s late 70s and subsequently till 83 but she was there for a longer time there was no monetary benefit at all but single handedly she took a lot of strain in developing this research institute to the international standard and many scholars we have personally seen used to come to the ksri from different parts of the world to study under her whether it is shaivism alankara shastra or natya shastra many subjects for that matter and the way she used to deal with them is something really you know enjoyable and she had absolutely a great mastery over the subjects that she was uh, teaching and she used to take a lot of notes not only for herself but even for the research scholars i can say very confidently because she had done a lot of work in yoga she whenever she used to read any book on shaivism and as she came across many terms in yoga she would take a small uh, list of uh, uh, terms in the bit papers you know small small papers for balu she will write and all the references and everything like that she used to give to almost all of us a very good task master and uh, always or colleague 
she was she has done a lot of work she had received lot of awards she has traveled to many countries and she also was the recipient of the president's award for her contribution to sanskrit and she has left behind a very good legacy which we are fortunate to continue and after her sad demise in 1999 on 5th of may it was a very sudden and very shocking news for all of us and uh, we didn't know how to proceed fortunately for us tb madhavan sir was there and he took care of the institute and all the members of the institute all the staff of the institute so we have grown over these years for more than two decades mainly because of the great scholar like dr janaki as well as cb madhavan and others and after her demise dr kameshwari mahesh basu mainly we created this endowment to arrange for a lecture each year on any topic in sanskrit literature because she had done lot of work in all the areas we have been inviting scholars to deliver talk under this endowment and her family members especially her brother and uh, her nieces and others they have donated a lot of money out of which we are able to give scholarship to one phd scholar of our research institute so that we will keep the memory of dr janaki for the years to come and this year we had requested professor tyagarajan few days ago to deliver a lecture under this endowment and he readily agreed and professor tyagarajan is well known to all of us he is one of us it is not an exaggeration he is also a product from the vivekananda college and he is very familiar with the kupusami shastra research institute for more than 5 or 6 decades more than any of us here in which also he had worked of course with, without any honorarium and even when we take the old book register of our library you know we can see his writing even today we have kept all these things in our library meticulously they used to write the accession number name of the book subject everything i mentioned this especially to know how much in ancient times you know i mean some years ago each scholar has done some sacrifice to keep the light of sanskrit glowing we should all be thankful to all the elders because without them no institution would have flourished so professor tyagarajan was also teaching in madras sanskrit college and then he went to presidency college as assistant professor of sanskrit and he rose to become the head of the department of sanskrit he had produced lot of books and to make everybody understand the importance of sanskrit he wrote in tamil also he translated many books in tamil and he has guided more than 150 mphil and phd scholars which is a great record and not only that he has made sure that almost all the scholars who uh, worked under him were employed that's a great thing that he did and the shows his influence in the field of sanskrit everywhere and financially he supported many students which is a rare quality and in presidency college the research department was kept alive by the efforts of professor tyagarajan 
many students join there for PG course as well as for MPhil and PhD. And many of them, or almost all of them, are well settled in many colleges and universities thanks to Professor Tyagarajan's uh, uh, guidance. And Professor Tyagarajan, to make Sanskrit popular, was running the Ratnadipika program in the Doordarshan. Those days, every fifth Saturday, I think, this uh, program was uh, telecast in the Doordarshan. And he used to invite many scholars and personally interview them and bring out many facets of uh, Sanskrit literature to common public. And he had also done a lot of work in All India Radio to propagate Sanskrit. And through his students, he released hundreds of CDs in the field of Vedas, Stotras, etc. So Professor Tyagarajan is a multifaceted scholar. He has visited many countries, participated in many of the national and international conferences, presided over many sessions. And one thing which stands apart or makes Professor Tyagarajan distinct from the other scholars or most of the scholars is that he ventures to enter into many fields of Sanskrit literature where others would hesitate to go. Whether it is aircraft or mantra or any field for that matter, he is always ready and he puts in his effort to call out information. And recently, I can give this example, a chair has been created in our research institute in the name of Sanatana Dharma. And Professor Tyagarajan is adorning the chair. And he is collecting a lot of information in the field of endowments, religious endowments. How the ancient kings and those in power were supporting many scholars through endowments, gifts, etc. From Vedic time onwards, from classical literature, from inscriptions, and so on, from Dharma Shastra text, so on. So, Professor Tyagarajan always indulges in new things. He is for, you know, opening new vistas. Because most of the professors go into the fields of Vedanta, Alankara, or Sahitya. Whereas Professor Tyagarajan ventures into many unknown fields and he brings out so many new factors. That is the need of the hour. And he participates in many discussions in the TV, in many channels, just to showcase the treasure of knowledge that our language contains. So we are Thankful to Professor Tyagarajan for coming over today to share his knowledge in the field of Alankara and Sahitya and also Sangeeta. He is going to talk about Kaku in Sahitya and Sangeeta and Professor Janaki, Dr. Janaki, I think, should be very happy today from above because this is also her favorite topic, Sangeeta and uh, Samskrita. So once again, on behalf of the Kupusami Shastra Research Institute, I welcome you, sir. And I welcome all the scholars and the enthusiasts who are assembled here to listen to Professor Tyagarajan. Over to Professor Tyagarajan. Vani, Vitasuka Vani, <coughs> Alikula Venim, Babam Puddhidroni, Vina Sukha Sisupani, Natagirvani, Namami Sarvani. Indeed, I am really happy to address uh, 
Sir, where is our audience today? On the topic Baku in Sahitya and Sangeeta. The two. As a Dr. S.S. Janaki commemoration in Doman picture. Before I start this exact topic, I would like to thank Dr. Bal Subramanian, who has given an excellent introduction about me. And but at the same time, I re really feel happy to address before Dr. Srinivasan, my good friend and scholar, Dr. Kameshwari, and others who are attending this uh, session. Before I go deep into the subject, I want to speak only a few words about Dr. S. H. Janaki, with whom I was associated for some time. Actually, I was working in KSR. The first appointment I got after getting my MA. I was there. Of course, she was a strict officer as far as I was concerned at the time. Very serious, just like Dr. Raghavan. Of course, that molded me, my career for future, I would say. And for delivering the lecture on the commemoration of Dr. Risa Janaki, I chose deliberately this topic because as Dr. Balu has already stated that she was interested in both Sahitya and Sangeeta. I know she was always after Bharata's Nati Shastra. She was enacting dramas in, in Velapur. And Mattavarni, she was uh, very much interested in uh, creating a stage for Bharata's Nati Shastra. How it was in those days, she projected uh, in the Bharati Vidya Bhavan Gallery. So, I am indebted to her, at the same time indebted to the people who have invited me for delivering this talk. Now I am coming to the subject straight. Generally, everybody knows there was Sangeeda Sahitya Kalavihinaha Sachat Pasuku Ucha Vishana Hina. So, so many things because in front of me, all are scholars. I need not explain the meaning of it. Very uttering of the words itself is understandable. So, Sangeeta and Sahitya is something it should be embedded in one's life. Otherwise, the life is waste. So, Sangeetam Atta Sahityam Sarasutya Tanadvayam Ekam Apad Maduram Anyat Alochanantam so, Sangeeta and Sahitya are considered to be very, very not only interesting, it is just like the sweet nectar. Ekam apada maduram anyate alochanam. You should think on that. You should dive deep into it and then understand 
the nuances of the Gita and Sahitya. That respect, I have taken this particular topic. Kaku. Many people may not know what is Kaku. People who have gone through the dictionary, they may understand that to be, oh, intonation. Okay. What is that intonation? Generally, in day-to-day -day life, we are coming across such intonations. And what is the importance of it? It is that very intonation changes the entire meaning. In Yakarna, you say, Upasagena Dattvattha Balata Nyetra Niyate here, by Kaku, the meaning is changed. It gives a suggestive meaning also, according to Antarudna, which we are going to deal with in another few minutes. In Tamil, I would say, what am I If you ask like that, then you are talking about the health. How is your health? No. What dumb you did again? What dumb you did again? That means it is an attack. Be careful. Is the meaning that is derived out of the mere intonation? If that is the case, where is it? Is it out of word? Uttered? No. It is no. It may have connection with the word, but the word itself is not giving the meaning. The sound gives the meaning. So sabda means here is not the word. It is the sound. So sound changes the entire thing. So, Kaku is in that respect only, how it changes the meaning. And the, whether the poets are writing poetry or in dramatic literature, whether people are attempting on such Kakus while writing, yes, that has to be understood by the reader who reads it. Oh, in this place, he is applying Kaku. <laughs> so, such things we are going to see. So, Vyakyata Veti, no Kavi. That's what Guru used to say. So, when you are deeply, deeply interested, you can understand the very heart of the poet. How he is delivering the goods to the audience. So before that, we will step by step go by uh, defining what is Kaku. That really it is a tendency that who has, uh, is there any precedence about it? Kaku? Anything is available in Vedas? So anything is traced to Veda with regard to our Indian literature. We don't find anything with regard to Kaku in Vedas. We have got Swaras, Karto Parada, Savak, Vajrana, Ajamana, Minasti, all these things we come across. Probably the same Swara is renamed as Kaku in later literatures. Some people are under the, or rather also speaking about Kaku, the word has come out from Parsi. But in my opinion, this Kaku is nothing but pure Sanskrit word. Based on the explanations given by Amaragosa, Kalpadruma, and other ancient texts on which we are basing our classical literature. 
போதேத் சா அர்த்த சம்பவா இது விஞ்சனா ஹேது ஜுத்திஷ்ய பின்ன கண்டீரை தாகுரித்தியம் இதே காக்கும் ரச்சயித்வா உதாகரணம் இஸ் கிவன் குரு பரதந்திரதையா மத தூரதரம் தேசம் உத்தியதோ பந்தும் அலிகுல கோகில லலிதை நேஷதி சொர்பி சமயே அசௌ நைஷதி அபி தர்ஹி ஏஷத்யேவ இதி காப்வா விஜிதே இத்யுக்தம் நெக்ஸ்ட் ஸ்லைட் the meaning is change of voice under different emotions such as fear grief anger that is it is said to be a word in feminine gender in kannada and other literatures or other dictionaries if you just go through this kaku is given as masculine gender also now with regard to sanskrit is ஸ்ரீயாம் விகாரோயகாட் இஸ் தட் சோக பீத்தியாதி பிர்தனே சோக சாரோ பீதி சோ வென் யூ ஆர் எக்ஸ்பிரசிங் த்ரூ சவுண்ட்ஸ் யுவர் சாரோ ஆர் ஃபியர் எக்ஸெட்ரா இட் இஸ் காப் டூ அலீக காக்கு கரண குசலதாம் சென்டென்சஸ் லைக் காமே காந்தே சாரசிகா காக்குமேஷன்ட்ரரி in such cases intended meaning is suggested by a change of voice change of voice means suggest, intended meaning suggested by the change of voice i would like to give uh, some uh, uh, tamil explanation for it a simple word um, Aam, aam is Sanskrit only. When government does it, it becomes Tamil. Aam, aam. Aam, aam. Aam, aam. Aam, aam. It gives it under own meaning. Aam, aam. Aam, aam. So this Kaku gives a different meaning. As if you are frustrated with that something which is spoken to you. Aman, then you are affirmative, you, you accept it. Aman. Aman, Aman. You are uh, emphasizing. So, this Aman has got different shades in various ways. You can say that in various occasions and contexts, this Aman has got different meanings. In tone also. Aman. Uh, um, that means what you don't accept it at the same time you are trying to criticize a person um, um. so how many ways of shades of tones accordingly the meaning changes and really we are under the impression that the word alone gives the meaning no the sound gives the meaning i will go a little <clears throat> um further to the vedas and also <coughs> the religious we are talking about om om is primarily a sound then we are trying to dissect it in a different way as a uh, Aruma, etc. The letter comes only after words. The sound is first. In that sound itself, we have got variations. And every sound has got its own meaning. That we will have to understand. Then only the letter comes, the word 
comes and then sahitya all these things even vedanta everything comes out so basic is sound it is the kaku vibration of the sound so change of voice resulting from distress or fear or anger grief i told you then kriya of karo saro emphasis that muttering sometimes you whisper you mutter some something within yourself which exhibits your like or dislike your frustration all these things are there in this cup next i think i have discussed about this slide guru patanta yat patatu ratam desu ke to next next see to illustrate it there is a intonation being obedient to the elders he is to leave that is guru patantaya you said you know being obedient to the elders he is ready to leave for a country far away oh friend will he not return during the season of fragrance which is charming by the presence of swarms of bee, black bees and cuckoos this is the english translation from the english translation you cannot understand the real import of the sound that is made or rather applied in sanskrit tas mola bhasha amke nahi va rasam bibhuti pandita ko hi priya agar aswade bhuti im pradinidasya have excellent uh, versities many of us may not know this it's an eclectic he has a struck me hot very many times mula bhasha muke nahi va rasam see do it is a little away from the topic i would like to explain it mula bhasha muke nahi va rasam pipadi pandita so you have to understand the entire essence of it only through reading the original text original language in original language to hi priya adar aswade dutim pritim dasiti who can enjoy the kiss of a, a lover through once uh, duti messenger who can enjoy that if a person kisses the messenger can he enjoy the original a kiss of uh, a lover so such an interesting thing which i, I, I just i brought it because i remembered now next slide you will come to kaku as a rush what is kaku a change in the voice indicative of the emotion like fear grief anger etc under which it was produced or embellished embellishment of a mode in music emphasizing certain phrases and gamakas subtle movement movements particular to that mode a voice or word used to mean different form or contrary to the literary meaning that is important contrary to the literary meaning of what is said or written is a cousin a nativity in a word or passage particular to a region uttering of words in a low distinct voice in grumbling hostility or dislike and implication expressing hatred anger etc 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 next slide and see we'll be are talking about the classical literature we will have to go to natya shastra upon in which that is a chart key so much interesting the geta in a context सप्तस्वरा what is that sakancha and nirakancha is explain aniyo aniyuktartakam vakyam sakanchami ti samkitam niktartam tu tad vakyam nirakancham tad uchyate of course i will explain later next 
तत्र साकांचम नाम तारादि मंत्रांतम अनीतार्तम अनीर्यात्त वर्णालंकारम अड्डोरस्तानगतम निरागांचम नाम नियुक्तार्तम निर्यातित वर्णालंकारम चरस्तानगतम मांद्रादि तारांतरम की तारांतम इति नेक्स्ट two ways of intonation that is one entailing expectation sakantra the other entailing no expectation niragantra these relate to the sentence but the sentence which has not completely expressed its intended meaning is said to be entailing an expectation and a sentence which has completely expressed such a sense is said to be entailing no expectation there is nirakantha there is something need not be uh, to, to be told later next up to according to nadi sastra also refers to intonation according to nadi sastra it is the part of the vocal representation vachika which is used in communicating the meaning of the drama and calling forth the sentiment of the there are two ways of intonation up to Of course, you already did that. Can't try, can't try. We have said yes. In telling that is, can't try. Can't try. Refers to the meaning as that has not been completely expressed, and that we have already discussed there, and begins with a high pitch and ends in low pitch mantra, and has not completed its varna or alikara. And in telling, no expectation relates to. The terms of the sentence, the meaning of which has not been completely expressed, and which has notes from the head and begins with the low pitch mandra and ends with the high pitch tara and has completed its varna and alakar. So we will be seeing, learning it in due course of our lecture. Next, the the flow cards that have been given there, which of course. Uh, With time kind of constraint, I am not going to read all the slokas. But anyway, Arthas Nati Shastra has given exhaustive uh, uh, explanation about this kavu. Uttarotar Sanjal Pavarsha Chaypaneeshu Cha Achaypaneeshu Cha Tita Rucha Abhinay Avayge Gandhi Dey Tata. He starts like that, then he goes on. Um, Uh, lot of verses. So, Kaku is an essential factor. You have to apply it unless you apply it, then you will not have either the sentiment or the bhava or anything. So, even in our day-to-day -day life, you have to employ the Kaku. The Kaku alone decides. the intention of the speaker and in that way i would like to say by kaku of a person one can understand the psychology behind it what he thinks in tamil i would say um pena romba nanave you say like that Then uh, the other person will be thinking that he says it is it's not going to be um, it is going to be bad. No, but he is expressing in a different way. Nave irk. Here you can understand that person first has some sort of envy that you possess a pen. This is so beautiful. The same way he wanted to appreciate. There is some sort of hesitation. But at the same time, because he happens to be the friend, okay. If how many emotions have crossed in that particular kaku? Next, yadite, durarte, che, bayarte, si ta viplute, nimaste vidar ke che, gada jastra chate che. चिंतायां तपसी स्थित मंत्रा नीचा जगत्या 
kakur maatya prayok trubhi si kakur vyadite yorate ellarnu odrega ooru ooru mari different types of kaku different types kaku is nothing but the intonation how we are going to present it that's all a person who is affected by jora or the fever for him you cannot just have big very big kaku for him only the low what to do i am shafani like that only same thing same word if it is written like that you cannot say what to do i am suffering then it doesn't have any impact on that like that so many things he is discussing of course uh, i am jumping over some such things because i have presented the powerpoint people may come to know about to read it later and understand how bharata has depicted or rather taken kaku as a big subject and he has dealt with in his nati shastra next drishta nashta anusarane ishta ishta anitta sute tatha vittartha vyapane chaiva chinta dhyane tateva cha ummade asuyite chaiva upalambe tateva hi abhyaktartha pravade cha kathayoge tateva cha uttarottara sankalpe karye atijay samyute vipride vyadite krode dukke shoke tateva cha next विस्मये आमर्षयोश्चैव प्रगर्षे परिदेविते विलंबिता च दीप्ता च काकुर मन्द्रा च वै भवे वेयर यू हैव टू मेक द काकु एज मन्द्रा इन द लोअर टोन देन लघु अक्षर प्राय हृदय गुरु अक्षर हृदय तथा उच्चा दीप्ता च कर्तव्या काकु सूत्र प्रयुक्त हुई सो लाइक दैट ही इज डिस्क्राइबिंग वेयर यू हैव टू अप्लाई high pitch low pitch ball of course in veda we are, we are talking about udatta anudatta surita and other things <coughs> and then future udatta ka niche a few explanations are there and i used to wonder why panini chose the word for uh, uh, ukalo achu arsa dirga pita ukal kuch उंडीन कत प्लस उन अधिविद्या का का कुहु तो प्रॉब्ली दैट ऑफ कोर्स यू लेट जस्ट बी दैट नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट तो सूट वेरी सेंटिमेंट्स इंटरनेशन का कु शुड ऑलवेज बी मेड हाई एक्साइटेड फास्ट इन जॉइंड एंड कंफ्यूशन और शुक्रोच रिप्रेजेंटिंग शॉर्टनेस एंड रफनेस Agitation, weeping, <coughs> challenging one who is not present, threatening, terrifying, calling one who is at a distance, and rebuking. So these are things everybody knows. So while I am talking, so many people will come across. So he is talking about this. He is talking about this like that. Keep it in mind. In case if you yourself can think on that, okay. Otherwise, uh, at the end of this lecture, I will give you three minutes where we can discuss about it. intonation. Should be made grave and low in sickness, fever, grief, hunger, thirst, other vision of this. Why should we do that? It is through cock only. We are expressing our heart, express our uh, uh, the. meaning that we, we want to convey through madhyama now that para pashinti madhyama that's of course in philosophical range so duriyam vacham manushya vadanti the duriya comes only from para so what is that 
which is in Parag. That could be caused by the sound that emanates from Parag up to Vaikiri. And the Vaikiri reveals what the person has in mind. Next. So intonation should be made grave and fast in soothing children. Refusal to love or cha and then panic and attack of gold. The intonation should be made slow, excited, and of low pitch in following an object lost after being seen. Hearing anything untoward about a desired object or a person. Communicating something desired. Mental deliberation, lunacy, envy, insure, saying something which cannot be adequately expressed, telling stories. So for anything and everything, we have got a lot of examples. We don't have time to discuss. We join the confusion and action involving excess. So like that. Next. Grave and slow intonations have been respect for words, containing pleasant sense and bringing in happiness. Excited and high intonations have been prescribed for words which express sharpness and roughness. Thus, the recitation should be made to have different intonations by the good uses. So that means while you are reciting, reciting in the sense, speaking also, that uh, comes uh, uh, automatically, <coughs> that is uh, reciting, you recite it, or otherwise you are speaking. So all these things are uh, brought under Kakuni. <coughs> Next. Sentiments regarding all these things, even for Shanta, they sound. If a person is meditating on, then also you have a sound. That sound gives you the sound, gives you some meaning. That's what Kalidasa says. Even Shiva did the penance with some intention. That intention now it was understood. Probably he was contemplating on that, which is not come out, but it is there inside in the form of sound. Because it's as long as the, the thought is the, um, deliberately brought out through sound. When it is not brought out, that is inside. So we used to always say that uh, we do not know what he has in his mind. What he has, he has something, some thought is there, which uh, is trying to come out in the form of sound, but he is just trying to uh, protect it or keep it secret. Next. There is one work called Kavya Vilasa. He is also talking about Kapu. He is the author is Chiranjeevi Bhattacharya of 17th century. While defining Vakrukti Alankara in Kavya Vilasa, he says, Kaku Sirachalana Nyaya. Kaku Sirachalana Nyaya. So here, he is not talking about sound, only moving of it. But when the natural voice of one is changed to speak something, it is also called Kaku, he says. So while well, you are <coughs> accepting, you are uh, shaking your head <coughs> or when you are not expecting also, you are shaking your head. But mere shaking does not reveal Kaku, but when you are saying mm -mm, mm, mm, when you say, then it becomes Kaku, kaku in the form of sound. Otherwise, the Kaku is in the form of uh, Thought. That he says, Sirachalaya, Sirachalaya, Nyaya. Next. Kavya Prakasha, Mamata. So, he used to wonder, see, when we are talking about some subject, we are always taking into consideration you know, the great uh, uh, Saitikaras, Saitya, um, Lachanakaras, Mamata, Rajashekara, and others. The Bamakhan and others have not talked about. Uh, Kaku. Perhaps they thought that it's a, it's a small matter. No. Of course, they had a lot of other things to discuss, though they just omitted or slipped this 
Kaku. Kaku can never be slipped. Without Kaku, even literature cannot flourish. According to Mahmuda, when a speaker says something in one sense, and the hearer accepts it in a different sense, due to the working of Slesha and Kaku, it is called Vakrupti. So they are trying to explain Vakrupti, but the Kaku point is always there. Next. There is one text called Yanarnava, wherein he says it is a tone of distress. See, it is a commentary on the 11th, on the, according to the commentary on the 11th century Yanarnava, a treatise on Jain Yoga, roughly 2200 Sanskrit words is composed with Subhachandra. Next. In which you find this program. Sangai ji kim na vishadyate bhapuridam kim kidyate namai ji pritikim na vijrum bade pritinam kim na padaha chamraha kim na bayana kaha sopnavad bhima na kim panchakaha Next. The meaning of it is that by seeing the girl is one not disturbed by attachment. In one way of reading, you get this meaning. In another way, another meaning is getting you are getting. Is one not disturbed by family attachments? Is this body not condemned by diseases? Does death not open its mouth? Do calamities not do harm every day? Rogam Purvanti? What is said in every case, Sarvatra, is to be uttered, Yojya, with the tone of distress. When you are reading that, it's a should give that particular feeling. He says, our hell is not dreadful. Another meaning. And the way in which you are twisting the kaku, by which you are getting another meaning. Our hell is not dreadful. Are not sensual pleasures deceiving like a dream? Because of which having discarded one's own benefit, you have a desire for the world, which is like a city of Anaras. So another meaning. Next. Abhi Mimamta Brajashekra. He is a person who deals more about Kaku. Brajashekra thinks that Kaku is a quality of recitation or reading modulation of voice which is trying to bring out the meaning intended by the poet. Intended by the poet. That is important. That's what uh, even Andhavardhana and others are going to uh, support later. What is the intention of the poet? Tavi Hirdayam, we say. What he intended? That has to be brought out. So, Avipraevan, what is the Maha Kapuhu? Iti Ayavari. Next. It is the intention of the poet or intention of the speaker. Such a vida, saganta, nira, ganta, that we have already discussed about it. We will be discussing about Bharata's Mahati Shastra. But he is uh, taking some more Tadeva Kam, Mantrena, Nira Gantam, and he is uh, further developing Acheva Gurba, Krishna Gurba, Vidaka Gurba, Chedi, Sa Akanta, Sakanta, Vidirupa. 
ಉತ್ತರ ರೂಪ ನಿರ್ಣಯ ರೂಪೇದಿ ಇರಾಕಾಂಕ್ಷ ನಾವು ಈ ಸ್ಥಳಿ ತತ್ರ ಆಕ್ಷೇಪ ರೂಪ ಇದಿ ಮೇ ವಲ್ಲಭಾತಿ ತದಾ ಅಹಮಿ ವಲ್ಲಭ ತದಾ ಊರು 
தை ஆஃப் சுயோதனா சந்தீம் கருவது பவதான் பதி பரேன கோ அண்ட் தென் ஹி மேக் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஷிப் வித் சம் சார்ட் ஆஃப் காம்ப்ரமைஸ் வித் எனிமிஸ் சோ இட் இஸ் நாட் கான்டெக்ஸ்ட்லி பீமஸ் ஆங்கர் இஸ் நாட் தட் ஹி இஸ் ஆஸ்கிங் மத்னாமி கௌரவ சதம் சமரேன கோபா ஒன்னுட மாட்டேன் நான் அத்தனை பேரும் இந்த சமரே இந்த கோபா காப்பு அப்படி பண்ணணும் இப்ப சாரமாவே இங்கிலீஷ்ல யூ கோயிங் தட் இஸ் கிராமட்டிக்கல் சில பேர் கேட்பான் யூஆர் கோயிங் யூஆர் கோயிங் அதான் காப்பு வேற ஒண்ணும் இல்ல So you are able to make a question out of that Kaku. The same way here. Atnami kaurav satam samarena kopa. Yushasana shi vidhinam nam pibhavi evasak. Sanjur nayami gadaya. So you are going to Sandim karodu bhatam. Nipati kupadi. So, but a type of Kaku that gives a different expression, feeling, etc. So, a reader should read in such a way that kaku is understood and only then you will find the sentiments behind it and the bhava also emotions next evam vichatura kaku yogo api so three types of kaku also can be uh, included that sayam vasidino uranga vadu so he is giving tasya pare padirayam மீனிங்ஸ் <laughs> then uchyatam tapachaniyam sheshaneeshware parushata sagi sadhu so like that another example chaturyoga all the more to be there next sakina boisina amba vakye kapuriya istita yet vakye vidam margo yo anyataiva vyavasthita chatu anga abhinayo uttaha tam kaku turte anita ayam kaku krito loke vyavaharu kekalam சாஸ்திரேஷ்வராஜ்யம் காவியாபி ஏஷ ஜீவிதம் சாஸ்திரேஷ்வராஜ்யம் ஈவன் you can't understand the real import of the meaning for example we have been talking about in comparative philology and talk of devanam priya devanam priya devanam priya if you are this giving straight impression that is he uh, is uh, very close to or rather uh, lovable to devas it is not actually the intention devanam priya means he is a fool the fool is addressed as devanam priya pandita manya he say pandita manya but he is thinking like a pandita that means what it is not like that things like that actually he is not so he is satreshu bi samrajya adhisya yesha jeevitam see the emphasis just like vakrukti jeevitam kavisya atma vidiratma kavisya kavisya atma duni like that kavisya api yesha jeevitam andarna accepts it so it is the life of a kapya kapu is very very important next amu urde kapu atantra matandrita sputi karoti tu satam bhava bhava abhava abhine chaturi ittam kavin nibandini yat ittam cha patiman e the kavi if you want to be a kavi you should always give importance to kapu At the same time, if you happen to be a reader, an enjoyer, a connoisseur, 
then you will have to read it in such a way that you understand the thought behind it and the meaning behind it. Yada, nibandha nigadha chayam kanchit nishinshati karoti kavyum rayena samskritatma tatata paditum veti saparam tasya siddha sakasuti. That's what the Dayagiri has said. Next. Rudrata. For the first time, Rudrata, 9th century AD, recognizes Vakruti as Santalankar, defines two varieties, Snesha Vakruti and Kago Vakruti. The second one is Kago Vakruti. It is defined as the change of speakers' intonation. We understand a change in the meaning of a sentence. Next. Kago Vakruti is where different meaning is conveyed by a simple substitution of another intonation pattern. He is giving an example. When Drada thinks that Kaku is an Alankara called Vakrokti, Kakurva, Vakrotir Nama, Sadda Alankara Vayam, Drata. He is bringing it under the Sadda Alankara. No. Gaya Shagra says, how can it be a Sadda Alankara? It is a modulation of voice. So there is some sort of uh, um, arguments, debate in between uh, Drata and Gaya Shagra. Okay, let us omit that. We are talking about Kaku as a, something, a sound that uh, completely rules over the entire world by way of giving different meanings. Next. He is giving an example. Salyamapi, Skaladantaha, Sodum, Sakke, Taha, Alaha, Dikdam, Dirai, Punar, Akar, Nagupita, a bold man might suffer even a poison tip more gnawing at the heart. But it, it is impossible, impossible to bear the harsh and the baseless change charges of the vicious people who are angry with any reason. Spoken with one intonation, the voice as an ascetic sentence. It means in a different way, it gives something and, uh, an opposite meaning. Next. The meaning is which is people, but spoken with another intonation. It means the poison tipped bar is bearable, then the harsh words are definitely bearable. So, in a simple way. Next. Coming to the Nyalaka. I always enjoy the Nyalaka because he has covered on all the faces of uh, the literature. He says, uh, it's because I wanted to read him, read his sentences, which are more crisp. I have brought this, of course, which is a small introduction to uh, Kaku. Ananta hi vangkilpa, vangkilpa ha, then prakara hai vcha, lankara. Even alankara is a vangkilpa ha, that is a, that goes with the walk. Guni vujak vigya se cha, prakara antre na pili. Vinyatam Angamal Trainer, which is to Mustieva, Duni Buddhu, that is the meaning. Tadayim, Duni Nishendrupo, Duni Nishendrupo, Duti Yobi, Mahakavichio, Ati Ramuni Yo, Rachini Yaha Sagrade, Sarvadana, Nastieva Sagrade, Parinaha, Kagisia, Saprakar, Yetrana Putiyaman Artism Sursena, Sobagin, Tadidam. Okay, he gives an introduction to something which is Pratimanatha. Next. Ukya, Kavigiram, Alangri, Pratamapi, Pratiman, Chayesha, Chaya, Yesha, Usha, Lajeva, Yochina. So he is talking about Kaku now only. It is Usha. When he is talking about Dhani, he says, he says, it is like uh, the beauty which is uh, um, attached to a lady, which we cannot separate. It's a lavanya. Lavanya is a, uh, it is a sort of a shining. Here, Bhusha Lajjeva Yoshita. So it is just like uh, the beautiful uh, structure. But the Alankara, Shorming's Alankara. Automatically, but it is not an applied alankara. It is applied in the sense it is not like an ornament, but it is also very much like a shade. 
the shade of that beauty. Yavachi Shaka, Takwa, which is a tantra putti, the he wishes. See, when you say out of Duni, a Mengia is coming out, then Takwa. So, Excellent. Simple phrase he is taking away, but he has explained what is called. With the city, where I am living, Tatra Trahas was Tavoti, Tatra Shras are happy. But actually, it is not Sosta Bavanti Mayi, Sosta Bavanti. We give the arts Rasha. That is the cup. While I am living, and the Dhritarashtra group is enjoying or happy. That is the meaning. Then next we will go to another example. Of course, another example we can skip. Next. Ways of generation. Of course, we can skip this center and this slide. Then Archie Pagdaba, Uttar Gagarba, we have discussed Krishna Gagarba also. Next. Then in that, Hiragan Chakabu, also Vidhi, Uttara, Nirnaya, these are the uh, different types that we have already seen. Next. Then he has got Kaku, then Sakanta, Hiragancha, Sakanta has got Archam Gurba, Krishna Gurba, Vitar Gurba, and Hiragancha has got Vidirupa, Uttar Rupa, and Nirne Rupa. How many varieties? Next. Then Archam Gurba, Yidime, Vallabha, Duti, Tada, Agamupi, Vallabha. So that we have already discussed. Next. Krishna Gurba also. I think we have discussed. Okay, you can skip that because we have discussed about it. Next. Okay, we will skip, skip. Skip. Next. Now, coming to, of course, uh, what is that? 715. Okay. Mm. Raja Shekhara is uh, not only talking about Kaku, there is an art of reading. Karoti Kavyam Prayena Samskutatma Yathatata Patitum Veti Saparam Yadha Esya Siddha Saraswati. We have already seen, of course, as a sloka. Now, the poets who are good composers may create poetic composition, but a good recitation is the one who has acquired skill and brilliancy at times of speaking. Therefore, when you are reading it, you have to read it with that bhava. Otherwise, it's of no use. It's just like reading Bharatiya's poetry. Achamillai, achamillai, achamindatillai, uchimidu vanidindu vidudundra modilu. Achamillai, achamillai, achamindatillai. That's what he read, read, uh, wrote. If you start reading it in a way, if you say like that, then it is not the exact way of reading. That is how we read the phone. That you let him learn. That's what Ajayagana says. There, is a, there was one saint, and of course, in our college, when I was reading Vivekananda uh, uh, College, the saint came and he was killing. Swami Vivekananda stressed upon string. So when he intoned this word string, he Went into the Madrasai. Strength. Okay. The strength should be strength. So the, if you are just doing, lowering it, then the strength is lost. So like that, 
So many examples are there. So, so many people have uh, made a lot of, uh, uh, have given a lot of examples going in day to day life itself. Next. Good recitation is, uh, of course, it comes out of uh, samskar. Samskara is, uh, doesn't mean that with the boss life or anything, I'm the Vedantic way I'm talking. You have to make it as a habit. Read it. That's why it is uh, just like a training given in uh, All India Radio and other places where how to read the news, how to express in dramas. So it is a uh, well, dramas. I remember an anecdote when uh, I wrote a drama. Of course, it, is a, it was a, not merely a translation, it's a transcreation of Vichakatika. Uh, I it was, it was termed as a Manmundi in the movie because, of course, broadcast in all the radio stations at the time. Then the Shakara role was done by Nalapat Raja, who is no more now. He's a very good actor. But uh, what he did, I wrote it as a. Uh, <laughs> like that. Then. The typist has a uh, uh, type something and then uh, he started telling. Of course, I was invited to just observe how things are going on. Then uh, Nadarajan started telling, Ura, 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 Ura. Then he started continuing that. What is Ura, Ura? I have not written like that, Ura, Ura. Then that the Ha in Tamil looks like Ura, Ura. So Ura, 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 Ura. That Baba he had already read there. Then he would have said, ah, ha, ha, ha. Then ura, 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 does not give that sense. So these are all the funny aspects of uh, observations. See, I had come across. Next. Uh, I say, grass, uh, suggestion. See, suggest for the reciter the different types of kavya should be read in different ways. You have to read it in a different way. Then we'll go to the next, next slide. Time, time to sign. What is appreciable recitation? Ayushakara says that if your reciter can read poetry with their sweet sound, proper intonation, clear, stressed according to the meaning, and uttering each letter distinctly is always appreciable with you, appreciated with you. Lalitam, Kaku, Saman, Lalitam, Kaku, Saman, Mitam, Ujjwalam, Artha, Vashakrata Varicheda Surdi Sukha Vivitka Varnanam Vivitka Varnanam Kaveha Vatam Prasam Chanti Next Next What happened next? Uh, the quality of visitation Ayashagra also alert the poets or Zeta that they do not read quickly or haltingly, very loudly or softly, without stressing at the correct places, and either too sweetly or too harshly is to be said. So everywhere, it is just like I would, uh, in, uh, on this occasion, I would like to remove that. Of course, right on Vishnu Sastra is always there. The next, uh, which we have come across, I had personally uh, heard the English speaking of Kulapiti uh, Balakrishna Doshi. The way in which he speaks, the quality of visitation, speaking of English, is to be learned from. So, such a so nice, emphatic. At the same time, the pause, see, depending upon the pause only, you have got a lot of meanings. So, when you are talking about pause, this is also a part of Kabu. Where you will have to stop, where you, have, you should not stop, where you will have to read a compounded words, where you should not split the compound. These are all the things uh, that are to be learned. Well, you are speaking. Only then you get the, you you, you uh, give the exact empathy of what you have in your mind to the audience. 
for example, in Tamil, I would bless you. அவாயம்ாயம்ாயம்ாயம்ாயம்ாயம்ாயம்ாயம்ாயம்ாயம்ாயம்ாயம்ாயம்ாயம்ாயம்ாயம்ாயம்ாயம்ாயம்ாயம
Next. Anya Raga Kaku is the contrasting quality of achieved by introducing Grahabeda techniques or Bhavas of other Ragas. Chetra Kaku emphasizes all the rules of the Raga in various combinations. Vadya Kaku is the technique of bringing an instrumental quality into the vocal expression of Ragas. Next. Sarmadeva in Sangeet Ratnagra speaks of Yantra Kaku, something different, meaning that the typical tonal quality or timbre or the sound produced by the different instruments like Veena, flute, etc. is called Yantra Kaku. Of course, if you hear the Veena, different way, different types of Veena, different types of sounds you are getting. So, there also you will find um, some sort of vibration. Chetra Kaku, particular uh, quality of the individual human voice. This indicates that the human body is called Chetra. The natural tonal quality or timbre of the voice depends on the physiological and anatomical feature, both inherited and uh, individual uh, expertise. Then, next, Swara Kaku, indicating a diminution or increase of the Sutis in a particular note. Anya Raga Kaku indicating that a Raga has taken the Chaya of another Raga, etc. But more than all this, Kaku is a modulation of voice that expresses a particular emotion. Even among the animals who do not use words, the sound changes under the stress of a particular emotion. Mar the mewing of the cat when she is hungry or angry or when she has lost her, lost her young one. See the sound each time the intonation or the viewing changes expressing directly the emotion felt. Next. Take such a simple word as no. It is just a term of negation, no more. But mark how by turning it differently it comes to know negation with a different emotion. Even so, no. No. Oh, no. Like that. You have got uh, different variations, different uh, feelings are being delivered. The even so in music, the modulation of the voice gives expression to different kinds of emotion. First of all, we would like to examine what factors contribute to emotional expression in music. Bharata and Nadi Satra, whole of 17th chapter of Nadi Satra is talking about so many things. Yes. Next. So many things, of course, you can skip. Those who are interested, they can just go to Karthas and then read all this. Next. It is only medium tempo that will bring out the joy of this Samyoga. Samyoga is a regard what type of tone you will have to use. So these things are being discussed in Karthas Next. An actual practice, the intensity of tone and tempo produces independent. Partha also mentions Shadangani. Six limbs of Kaku in connection with the Patya Vicheda, Anubandha, Arpana, Visarga, Deepana, Prashamja. Then these also can also be applied to musical expression. Next. Then Vicheda, he explains it. Of course, uh, we will skip, skip over to. Because time is, uh, I'm not willing to take much time. Next, Arpana. Next, Visarga. Visarga is to be understood, of course. Visarga is to be understood as the finishing of a sentence, which I want to just tell. Because so many things, other things you can understand. Because I have recorded so many, as Balu has already mentioned, uh, more than 160 CDs I have brought out. Well, we are uh, reciting. At the end, there is a. We, we must land on. Uh, if, if the sloka is going to come to an end, we will have to land on it. The same way, the music also. We will have to land. Abruptly, you should not stop. So many advertisements on TV. So many speakers. They, they just abruptly stop. You will be thinking that he is going to continue something. No. So it is, that should not be the case. People should understand, even when you are just uh, um, offering achanas to the deities, namoris, let's say, 
Like that, you let the land to in order to show the finishing. So, in, in music, it would mean singing or playing the notes in such modulation that the ethos of the melody, melody is brought out clearly and clearly. Next. Then the Panam, Parshamnam, of course, uh, those things, uh, of it can increase the other uh, feeling or uh, sentiment expressed by the uh, lyric. So, uh, even Kalidasa has makes use of uh, this, but of course, people differently interpret it in a different way. Samanya Pradivitti Purvakavyam Dari Shatvaya Sama Anya Pradivitti Purvakavyam Dari Shatvaya and all. But uh, even in Mahabharata, we've got example Nadi Jalam, Keshava Nari Ketu Vodal. When it is split in a different way, Nadi Jalam, Lankesha, Nari Ketu Vodal, we've got a meaning. So, by Kaku, you get different meanings. Kaku is very essential. Without Kaku, the entire, whether it, it is Shastra or Veda or the ordinary uh, Vavahara, cannot have the beauty of, uh, of the meaning and uh, uh, it cannot give the exact meaning of, of what one intended to say. So with these few words, of course, I feel that I have just introduced Kaku. People may have uh, many things in their day-to-day -day life also and in their reading also, they could have come across so many examples. Of course, it's a very vast subject. So it appears to be a little dealt with by the poem uh, Alakarikas. It is uh, a major issue, just like Doni taken by Andhardhana Kaku also can be taken and then discussed in various ways uh, with more definitions uh, advancing. But even then, even though it, um, you make it exhaustive, you cannot finish the subject. That is, it is talking about Sabdo, Sabda, Sabdo Nitya, Sasso Tattva. Thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, good. Thank you, sir, very much for a very detailed lecture. Actually, though you said it is a, a drop in the ocean, but it has been quite detailed and it is it is traced the history of Kaku from uh, Vedic Swaras through Nati Shastra, uh, Kavya Prakasa, Kavya Mimamsa, Dhanya Loka, Rudrata also there. In between he comes and then Rajasekra was dealt, with, dealt in detail. Uh, all his uh, definitions were given. Sangha, when it comes to music also, you started with the Nati Sastra, Sangha Deva, uh, 17 chapter of Nati Sastra and Sangha Deva, Sangeeta Ratnakara and Pashto Deva's Sangeeta Samayasara. It was a wonderful uh, voyage through the ages about Kaku. And Kaku, uh, you gave, gave the uh, two divisions, Sakamcha and Nirakamcha and the six varieties of each of them, three varieties of each of them. And the Chiranjeevi Bhattacharya's definition, Kakuhu Sirashchana Nanyaya. And you also correctly said, mere nodding will not do, along with the voice should go. Otherwise, Leela Kamala Patrani Ganeya Masaparuti will become a Kaku. Because it uh, indicates something different, suggests something right. different. Right. So that also you, you pointed out. And Kavya Mimam says, Abhiprayaman Patadar Mahakaku is beautiful. Is really beautiful on the basis of that he defined everything. And the Slesha Vakrothi and Kaku Vakrothi as two base, basic Vakrothi Alankaras, Vakrothi based uh, things. And uh, since you did not talk about so far till then, you, you did not talk about Swasta Bhavanti. So I wanted to say it in my concluding <laughs> speech. Swasta Bhavanti, my Jeevati Datraha, beautiful expression. When it is said, said on the stage, you will get it. You will get yes. the intonation, the variation. Yes. With you. Wonderful expression used by the poet and Kaku's Sharangas in music had been given by you. Very, very interesting. As you say, it is a quite a big topic. And when you say Kaku is used for emotional expressions, it is really wonderful. Even in music, we are able to see that 
for the morning you have bhupala for the night you have right. mangal as you say you should land you land in mangalam so you have right. to do that then it it gives the samapana uh, feeling also one is able to understand that it is going to end and yes. mentally they get prepared to walk out of the auditorium too <laughs> before correct. janagana mana is <laughs> correct. correct so that is interesting and kaaku one more thing is that it is used for wit irony sarcasm satire yes. beautifully the intonations give so much of uh, ingrained um, ingrained emotional expressions they are very well done through kaaku that is very very important so when you are doing, giving dramatic irony and dramatic sarcastic uh, statements a very very uh, uh, for instance uh, when vidushaka says uh, dushyanta uh, leaving out the tamarind uh, you are leaving out the jaggery at home you are uh, going after the tamarind what is it sanskrit uh, uh, i don't get indriyam indriyam virashi yes 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 that's a wonderful thing a um, mockery at the king at his yes. uh, playboy nature yes, yes. really good such things are used by the dramatist to criticize yes. the characters then and there itself and also to bring out uh, when he says um, bhav, um, what is it janana antara sauhridani what is it janana bhav stirani janana antara sauhridani janana antara sauhridani ha yes when he says that also the intonation should be there to bring out yes. this mental conflict Mm, these are all really wonderful things that have been used by our dramatists very nicely very naturally very very interestingly and you, one will have to go through them go through them again and again to understand the import that the play that the playwright has uh, infused into those statements it was really a wonderful set to go into that and i am reminded of that janaki uh, having the rehearsals for the dramas balu and vasu will know they have been with her i have only seen they have acted along with her balu will say ipudani aluviya eppadi ayana anukku na solli thattuma appdin solli thiru appdin solli thiru and adhe mari dialogue sollum bodhi eppadi sollanu she will say how to say that how to express things how to be angry how to be sorrowful how to be um, mocking at others how to be happy all those things she will teach and how to deliver the dialogue also so i am reminded of that when you when you were talking about the various emotions in the drama and music and everything and music also they will all dr c s sundaram nandini madam and uh, dr sita uh, uh, you would have seen dr raghavan we didn't see him so dr janaki they used to sit together and then discuss for this uh, verse what sort of a music what sort of a raga should be there what sort of a thala should be there what background uh, as you said yantra ka what background music should be there what um, instrument should be there and the tabla adikachu enna madri adikano enna beat varano everything should be discussed to get the effect actual effect the player would the player it would have intended so that was a real good experience we had today along with you most of us i think we who had been with uh, dr janaki we were reminded of all those days and we could see how she could do that and everything so we enjoyed our nostalgic memories also along with your lecture thank you very much sir and thank you